We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy. Good morning. Let's sing. I know. We know this one. makes you feel good here. How can I serve? How can I serve today, sweet spirit? How can I serve today, oh Lord? Speak in ways that I may understand. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will go. How can I change? How can I change today, sweet spirit? How can I Center for Spiritual Living, Parker. Lots of energy moving this morning, huh? You feel it? Energized, excited, alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. Yeah? Caffeinated. Caffeinated, yeah. <laughs> I heard one of the lyrics in the song that I don't think I'd paid attention to before. It said, how can I change today, sweet spirit? That's the one I don't really like. So like maybe I've kind of like ignored that one. I don't know. <laughs> How can I change? How can I transform? How can I be more who I truly am? Is really that question, isn't it? So how can we be more of that which is spirit living as us, expressing as us? And that's what we're going to talk about some today, this idea of purpose and passion and how we live into that. But before we get into that, I have a couple of things I want to share with you today. Some of you know that we have a men's ministry beginning today, and we also have a women's ministry beginning today um, after service. So if you'd like to stick around and be a part of that, um, if you are part of the women's ministry, uh, Jeanette and Pam, Jeanette's over here, Pam is over here. They are leading that, and uh, after service, just kind of gather around them wherever they find themselves, and uh, <clears throat> then we'll start with that. And Bob Duvall over here is uh, leading our men's ministry. So after service, just kind of gather around Bob wherever he happens to gravitate, and we'll go from there. So we're not exactly sure where we're going to meet, but we will be meeting. <clears throat> uh, speaking of Pam, she is doing, if you want a magical experience, uh, and there's one spot left on September 9th. 2nd, September 2nd, I'm sorry, September 2nd. One spot left <clears throat> with her horse magic. You can feel the energy and the healing power of the horse. Um, I'm, and if you have an it, there, this one spot left, so then it will be full. But Pam said this morning that if there are still people who would like to do that and participate in that to see her 
after service, and I'm one of those, so I missed out. So uh, I hopefully we can schedule another time for that, and so I'm looking forward to that. Speaking of other classes, I will be beginning a class um, on uh, Beyond Limits, which is a foundational class. Uh, that first week of second week in September, which is coming up really soon. It's hard to believe it's the end of August already. If you, yeah, I know there are some people who signed the sheet over here with interest in the class. We do ask that you go on the website and sign up through the website so we have a record of it there, um, and then we can communicate you with you that way. Um, I think that's all, right? Okay. So, I want to invite Jeanette up, our practitioner today, to share a reading with us. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> our reading today is from the February 2019 Science of Mind magazine, and it's uh, by Eugene Holden, and the title is Be On Purpose. Knowing what you are here for helps to re knowing what you are here for helps to guide you in revealing your good. Your purpose gives you direction and clarity. Your purpose helps to answer the questions, why am I here? Where am I going? Your purpose does not have to be anything huge. Your purpose is whatever brings your spirit joy. Life is such an amazing journey. What makes it amazing is you, each and every one of you. Please realize that the world would not be the same without you. There is no one, I repeat, no one on the planet that does life quite like you do. You are the one. God, spirit, divine intelligence, whatever you want to call it, so loved the world that it recreated itself and called itself you. Yes, you are the one. Once we start to have new thoughts about ourselves, new empowering thoughts, we begin to have new experiences. In the New Testament of the Bible, we read, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Dr. Ernest Holmes puts it this way, change your thinking, change your life. Only you can do this. Having thoughts of good create experiences of good. Once again, you have the power to be, do, and have what you want. Each day, affirm your highest and greatest good, no matter what the world is saying. Affirm that your good flows to you, through you, and from you with ease and grace. Know that you are one with the divine. Be bold. Live your life as if you are God's gift to the planet. Because guess what? You are. Opening a 
you to breathe. Maybe close your eyes if you would like. Feel yourself being supported in this space. Feel your body being supported by the chair. Feel your feet against the floor and feel yourself being loved and supported by the energy of Mother Earth. Open yourself up to the awareness of the energy of each other in this space. Noticing that you are surrounded by love. Just feel yourself comforted in that knowing. Then as we stop, as we breathe, as we settle in, we open. We feel our minds beginning to open, to receive, but also open to let go. Opening up to let go of any thoughts of limitation or lack, and open to the receptivity of the thoughts of possibility and potential of perfection and wholeness. Our minds are opening in this moment to the truth, the truth that each of us is an expression of that divine life that is living itself in this moment as each of us. We open our hearts Letting go of the fears, the doubts, the worries, the resentments, the guilt, the blame. Whatever it is that we may be allowing to hold us back and we open. As we let go, we open to receive love, forgiveness. Opening to truth again, the wholeness of the divine right here, right now. Feel into that as you open your heart. 
And as we open our minds to release and to receive, and we open our hearts to release and to receive, we open our lives. We open up to be the expression of that truth through our thoughts and through our words and through our actions that we allow ourselves to truly become the embodiment of that truth that lives itself in us and through us and as us as we let go and we let God have its life as us. And then as we choose to do that, the world truly opens, opens to let go and to receive that truth, that light, that love, the peace, the joy, the allness of God. And so as we stop and breathe, I invite you to go into the silence for a short time and just notice. Notice where you might be resisting some opening and just breathe into it opening up our minds, opening up our hearts, opening up our lives. And breathe in and just feel that breath. As you breathe in, just feel your mind open and receptive and your heart open and receptive and every aspect of your life open to be the expression of that divine life. As we breathe into that, let us sing that together just one more time. And so as we take that one more breath, let us affirm together, and so it is. Looking 
for an answer but maybe when the questions start to disappear it's all right here to be revealed my hopes and dreams surround me cause love is all around me it will be Ain't it funny how I can see it now? Love is all around me, yeah. Love is all around me, yeah. Love is all around me, yeah. I cannot be an ender to all the good that I'm expressing in confident without the fear of second guessing maybe I'm just crazy but if that's what it is then let me be insane I am not afraid to be revealed my hopes and dreams surround me Love is all around me, it will be revealed. Ain't it funny how I can see it now? The love all around me, love. And all this time, I've been doubting what I am a word. So I did uh, forget something this morning during announcements. We have a, a special birthday today, um, Dorothy, who is not feeling well today. We were hoping she would be here today so we could celebrate her, but today is her birthday, and so we want to send her lots of love for her birthday and lots of healing energy to feel better um, as she moves through this week. and then. Uh, we have another special birthday coming up this week. Jeanette's having a birthday. So we want to say happy birthday to Jeanette. And uh, yeah, anybody else having a birthday this week or this month? We'll celebrate everybody's birthday. So yay, all right, happy birthday, happy birthday. So today, um, 
as I said, today is uh, the last Sunday of August. That's hard to believe, isn't it? This time is just... And we are concluding the theme for this month, which has been about passion and purpose. And so today we want to sort of bring that to a close, bring that together, uh, and talk about how do we really live our passion and purpose. You know, we talked about the first week, I talked about passion, and my idea about passion is, yes, it's an emotion, yes, it's something that we feel, but in my way of thinking about it, I love the idea that passion is that fire that lives within us. It's that holy spirit, holy flame that just is there to be recognized and realized and revealed through us. It's something that's, it's like, it's, it's almost like this power, it is a power, it's like this power that wants to express through us. You know, that's what passion is to me. And then I talked about purpose, and our purpose, one of our main purposes is to realize ourselves, to, to live our truth. And then, as we talked about, to be the very essence of healing and prayer and mm, dreaming things into being and making things into being that are of the highest and best good for all. And then last week I talked about us being this divine elephant, you know, trying to live in this little ant hole. So how do we sort of bring all of that together and live it? really live with passion and purpose. So I'm going to share some ideas about that that came to me this week. Um, first of all, it really is about connecting, consciously connecting with that power and presence that is expressing as us that passion, that is expressing as us. To me, when I say living with passion, I'm not necessarily talking about living like full out, like, ah, you know, just mm, going for it all the time. <laughs> but that's not really me. <laughs> living with passion to me is living with the conscious awareness that you are passion expressing itself. It's like, you know, in the Bible it says, with God, all things are possible. With God, with the awareness of God, with the awareness of that power and presence, with that potential that is expressing through us, with a conscious awareness, a conscious connection with it, then all things are possible. When we live with the awareness of passion that wants to express through us, we really become that uh, our prayer really is that let me be the vessel. Let me be the one through which that expresses. It really it becomes our prayer becomes use me. Right? Use me. <laughs> oh God, I stand for you. Here I'll abide as you show me all that I must do. Use me. When we recognize that we really are the embodiment in this physical form of that divine power of passion, potential, and possibility, then our first response, I think, really must be, show me, lead me, guide me into what I must do. It's funny, we're talking about this, about how what we are about, I believe, in, in here at CSL Parker is supporting everyone and 
in experiencing their own divinity, awakening to their own divinity, having an experience of that. And what I want to remind us of is that, <laughs> I know it sounds, it may sound very religious, but you are the body of Christ. You and I are the body of Christ energy, Christ consciousness. You are the Christ embodied. Do you believe it? Yes. Yeah? Can we say it? Yeah. I am the body of Christ. Sounds very religious, doesn't it? <laughs> but how true is that? And that we are here to be the expression of that. If you don't like the word Christ, and I know sometimes that can bring up some embedded theology for some of us. I am the, the body of truth. I am the body of the divine. I am the body of perfection. I am the body of pure potential and possibility. I am all of that. I am the body of light. And so I think our opportunity, if we're to live with the awareness of passion and live our purpose, it's important for us to be willing to claim that. And as we are looking at living out our purpose in this human form, I think it's important for us to respect our human form. We are in human form. And to honor ourselves in this human form as an expression of the divine. I've, I've had resistance to the word boundaries. Because I, I heard that so much in the whole psycho psychological world, psychology world, <laughs> you've got to set your boundaries. And I guess I've had some resistance to that. Until, and not too long ago, I heard the spiritual teacher Matt Kahn, you're, anybody familiar with Matt Kahn, talk about boundaries as energy management. Energy management. And to me, that was like, Aha, an aha moment for me. Because, as I talked about last week, you are this multi dimensional beingness. You are this divine elephant, as Hafiz said, and we're trying to focus it all through this human form. And that energy field, you don't come into this life as a, as a ball of clay that somebody is here to mold into some kind of being. You come into this life experience with personality as a unique expression of God. I want to share with you something that Dr. Ernest Holmes says in this theme called You. You are a living being by virtue of the fact that through some process which no man knows, needs to know, or can know, life is incarnated as you, operating through you this moment. This is the gift of life. This is the Son forever begotten in the bosom of the Father. But you are an individual. Like all other individuals gradually awaking to their greater possibility. If life made you out of itself, which it most certainly did, and if you are an individual just a little different from all other individuals who ever lived, then life not only created you as an independent being, it also implanted a unique something within you. It will never be duplicated. 
The spirit that accompanies you through your life is just a little different from the spirit of any other person. Not different in that it is isolated because all are rooted in the one being, but different in that it is individual. So you come into this life experience with your own seed code, so to speak. You come into this life experience with your own gifts, your own talents, your own, I'm going to say it this way, your own energy signature. And it is so important as we move through this life experience to set some boundaries around that, to, set, to, to manage that energy. Because we know that other people will try to infringe on that. We know that other energies out there in the world will try to infiltrate or, or penetrate that energy field that you are. We know that. And we know that it happens as we're growing up. We know that it happens when we're children. It comes in. We take that stuff in. And as I said last week, now that we are adults, now that we can take responsibility, we must take responsibility for what we allow to come into our energy field. And I think that applies to people. That applies to situations. That applies to watching the news on television. <laughs> it applies to things that we take in that we think oh well that's just innocent or whatever but it's not everything affects our energy field everything and so it's important to set some very clear boundaries around that for ourselves the other thing I want to say about that is it's important to create boundaries not only about what comes in, but what goes out. How much energy we expend. I don't like to talk about limitations. I, don't, I think that we live in this field of infinite potential and possibility. We are these divine elephants. And in this human form, even Dr. Uh, Holmes says that there's only so much energy that we can hold in these human forms. There's only so much energy we can expend through these human forms. So it's important to know where our limits are. Somebody said to me after the first talk this past month about passion, she said, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do because I have so many different passions. I have so many things I want to do, so many things that interest me, so many things that excite me, so many things I want to volunteer for. And I think that may be true for a lot of us. We have so many things that draw our attention, that want our energy. And that's great. And how much can we truly give? I know you're all givers. I get that. I get that. I remember something that Unity co-founder Merle Fillmore always said, you don't need to pour out your life energy for someone else. We have to trust that, yes, we may show up. We, there are things that we may want to do, things we may want to give and contribute to other people. But what I want us to remember, and this is hard for us, I think, sometimes, is that we are not the source. Right? We are not the source. We're the vessel. We're the channel. And so be aware of when you get depleted. It can be, you know, the scripture tells us, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. If you're, if you're called to do something, or if you feel a desire to do something, check in with yourself. Is this, do I have the energy for this? Is this really in alignment with my energy? Is this something that I feel like I can absolutely not, not do? Does that make sense to you? And it really is okay sometimes to say, no. 
I can't do that right now. And that's hard for us, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard for us to set those boundaries and say, no, it's not mine to do. But it's not always ours to do. And so another thing about how do we live that passion and purpose is to be willing. I think it's so helpful when we can acknowledge that we are the body of Christ. When we can respect our own humanness, our own humanity, and, and be clear about where we are, what we're called to do, what we are, what is in our energy to do and to be. And it allows us, I think, the strength and the grounding to be able to stand with someone else and see the face of God within them. Because it is not that we have to be that for someone else. When we're serving others, what is our purpose? Is to call forth that awareness within them. You too are God expressing. You too have the potential and the power. You too are that embodiment of the Christ. And I'm here to reflect that back to you, to see that in you, to call that forth in you. And I think that's part of living our passion. So I've asked Laura if we can sing together the song probably you know, You Are the Face of God. Do you know the song? And so I want you to close your eyes right now and sing it to yourself at first. Imagine that you're looking in the mirror at your own face. And you're singing to yourself this song. to your neighbor, someone close to you, and I want you to sing it to each other. Do you recognize that within each other this morning? You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the And so as we recognize that within each other, I think it's also, as we move through that, it's, we can then connect with how do we serve? How do we really serve? 
And I think, how do we serve each other? How do we serve each other in spiritual community? I know many of you serve in so many ways here in this community. And there are so many ways that we can serve this community. Again, not out of any sense of obligation or duty, but out of a sense of connection with that passion and purpose. How do we, again, if we look at our purpose, that we are here to provide a space and a consciousness for everyone to come into and awaken and realize their own divinity, their own passion, their own expression of God. How do we serve that? What is something that you may have a gift that you might want to share in order to uplift and help people in that? Maybe, maybe you are wonderful at leading meditation. Maybe you love that. Maybe, maybe yours is as hospitality or greeting or planning or I don't know what that is. Whatever that is, I invite you to be with that and to, and to think about it in that way. What is it that I am here to give and to share? And then how do we come together? to serve the community out at large. We do some things, right? But what can we do as a gathering of people who know who we are, who live with passion and purpose and serve the greater community? That's something that we get to explore. And then lastly, I think living this truth. It's about how we live every day. The choices that we make, things that we do, things that we say. And sometimes I don't, I think we move about, well, I will own, my, own it for myself, move about my life unconsciously. Saying and doing and being and how can we live consciously? passion and purpose. I'm going to share with a reading from, again, I think I shared with you before, Wayne Muller. This is his book, A Life of Being, Having, and Doing Enough. And I was on my prayer call with my prayer partner this week, and I had this book lying there, so I just opened it up, and I opened to this, and I thought, oh, how perfect. <laughs> how perfect. He says, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Simply because you are alive on the earth, a vital child of creation born of dust and spirit, you are the light of the world. The Buddha also taught that we have within us this very same wholeness, what he called an innate natural perfection. The God of the Hebrews declared that the most essential truths of life and spirit were inscribed on their very hearts. And the prophet Elijah demonstrated that we carry an intuitive inner knowing, a still small voice of the divine in the quiet recesses of our soul. Many Native Americans speak of some manifestation of the great spirit who infuses all beings with this same vitali vitally sacred life force. For Hindus, the Atman or soul of the world is everywhere in all things, all beings. Many of us, when we read these words like, words like these, easily dismiss them as spiritual platitudes. We have heard all this holy talk before, and however inspirational it may sound, it do just doesn't ring true for us. It doesn't feel accurate and cannot possibly apply to the person I know myself to be. What if we really believed? this hidden wholeness were really true? What if we believed that we are the light of the world? What if we really believed that we are the body of Christ? What if, as an experiment, 
if only for one day. We lived as if we believed that there lived in us some reliable strength, wisdom, and wholeness. What if we were to pretend that regardless of our health or mood, our fortunes or circumstances, we would remain quietly wise, accurate, and trustworthy in our judgments and actions? Even more, what if we could actually feel, sense, and know with unshakable certainty that whatever, wherever we went, into whatever company or situation we were called, we would carry with us always this capacity to move with confidence and trust into any situation. How would we think, act, and choose? How would we respond differently to the world during such a day? What if we really believed? And what if we acted just for a day I was reminded recently of a, I shared it with Carolyn, I think maybe a couple of weeks ago, I was reminded of a Facebook post that I saw from a friend who was upset about something going on in the world. I can't imagine that, but um, <laughs> being upset about something going on in the world, and she posted, isn't anything sacred anymore? To which another friend replied, only everything. Only everything. So what if we could live our lives not only recognizing the passion and the purpose that is within us, the passion and purpose that is expressing in each other, but that passion and purpose that God's self is expressing through all creation? Could we really hold everything with reverence? Everything. Everything all the creatures and the plants and the earth and the atmosphere and everything, could we really see everything with reverence? I thought about the word reverence and I looked it up in the dictionary. <laughs> and what it said to me, I thought, perfect. Reverence is respect, deep respect, tinged with awe, deep respect, tinged with awe. What if we approached every moment of our lives with reverence? What if we approached every interaction with another person with reverence? Deep respect for the face of God that I see, tinged with this awe. Oh, wow. Are you amazing? Are you an amazing creation of God, of life itself? Just to be awestruck by everyone we meet. Wouldn't you just want to go, oh, ah, oh. yeah, just fall at their feet and see the beauty and the wonder and the awe. Oh, gosh, what if we approached all of life like that? <laughs> what a world we would co-create. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the love of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. 
So stop and breathe and close your eyes and truly allow yourself to be in the presence of the awareness of the presence that is expressing itself as you. The beauty and the wonder and the mystery and the majesty and the glory and the perfection of that life. the pure potential and possibility, the vibration, the frequency of Christ, the true light, the wholeness, the great spirit, by whatever name or nature that you know it to be, right here and right now. Claim all of that that you can embody right now as it expresses through your humanity trusting and knowing in every moment. You truly are the face and the body and the mind and the heart of God. And make a decision in every moment to see that truth in everyone that you meet. to know that you are here as the embodiment of passion and purpose. To uplift this field of consciousness. And by uplifting this field of consciousness, you uplift the manifestations of this consciousness. With deep reverence, respect, and all for all of creation. Breathe into that. Claim it, own it, be it. Because you already are it. And together, let us affirm it by together saying, and so it is. Amen. So now is a time in our service where we do have the opportunity to share, to serve through our gifts and offerings this morning. I know many of you give in other ways, and so we do greatly appreciate all that you do, all that you give. So I invite you to hold what you're going to share, whether it's in physical form or in virtual form, and hold it in your heart. Breathe into that space, infusing it with divine love, the power, the potential, the purpose, and the passion that you are. Knowing that it is an expression of divine love as you. Knowing that you are blessed as you receive and blessed as you give. And we are so grateful. And let us say together, and so it is. When I 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gosh. Hmm. So I invite you to stand if you're willing and able to do that as we breathe into the awareness of that life that moves through us and us as us. As we open our minds and our hearts and our lives to be the vessels through which that life expresses, we trust and know that expresses in so many beautiful and wonderful ways. And our financial good is simply just one of those. So we claim our prosperity and abundance as it flows in us and through us and as us. We give with love, we receive with love, and we are blessed. 
And together, let us say, and so it is. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I I am so, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I am, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. So grateful, I am so blessed. So, Katie, I saw the children coming out. Do we want to recognize our children this morning? Always. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And so as you go forth today and throughout this week, I invite you to take some time, look in the mirror, Sing to yourself, I am the face of God, claiming it, knowing it, and sharing that with the world. Have a blessed day, a blessed week. I hope to see you next week. Until Amen. then. Amen. Like How can I serve today, sweet spirit? How can I serve today, oh Lord? Speak in ways that I may understand where you lead me. I will follow where you lead me, God will go. Who needs, uh, who needs my love today, sweet spirit? Who needs my love today? Oh, Lord, speak in ways that I, I may understand. Where you need me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will go. How can I serve, sweet how can I serve today? Oh Lord, speak in ways that I may understand. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will go. Where you lead me, where you lead me, I will follow. 